Listen, I'm kind of mad, okay? I just learned something about the difference between the insulin that we can buy at the store versus the insulin that our pancreas is supposed to be making. I've lived with type 1 diabetes for 25 years. I'd never quite heard it explained this way. And I gotta tell you, it made me really mad because this stuff, any of this stuff that we are getting that's been manufactured, you know, in a plant is deeply inferior to the stuff our pancreas should be making. And the consequences of that, the consequences of how inferior this stuff is are huge. They affect every part of our health. Here's what I learned and what you need to know. Okay, so the insulin that your pancreas should be making for you stays in your system for about 15 minutes. 15 minutes. There is no manufactured insulin that stays in your system for only 15 minutes. Now, obviously, you need insulin second by second delivery. So it's not like your pancreas is just putting out a little bit of insulin and then 15 minutes later, it puts out a little bit more. Your pancreas, when it's working properly in a person without diabetes, is constantly, I mean, every second of the day, responding naturally to your glucose levels, to whether you just ate, to how much sugar your liver is producing. There is a constant drip of this amazingly rapid, fast, super perfect insulin to manage your blood sugar. And remember, along with that insulin, there's five other hormones that your pancreas is also regulating for you that people with type 1 diabetes and many people with type 2 diabetes do not regulate properly because the cells that produce insulin are supposed to communicate to the cells that regulate these other hormones. And in people with type 1 diabetes, those cells have been attacked and destroyed. Okay, so along with this amazing pancreas-made insulin that goes in and out, you're also getting all these other hormones that tell your brain when you're full, tell your liver to calm down, not to make so much glucose all the time, tell your body how to like slowly digest that food so it doesn't just all hit your bloodstream at once and spike your blood sugar 150 points. A whole bunch of really critical communication between all of these hormones. But this thing about 15 minutes is a really big deal. Here's why. When I take an injection of some of the fastest insulin that we have available today, that insulin stays in my system for four or five hours. We do also have inhaled insulin. Now, inhaled insulin cannot replace all of my injected insulin needs, but this insulin is a little different. It is really fast, but still the smallest dose of inhaled insulin stays in my body for about one hour. And then we have long acting injectable insulins, which can stay in the body for anywhere from 12 to 36 hours. Now, all of these different types of insulin are trying to mimic the benefits and the sole survival purpose of the insulin our pancreas should be making. But the fact that they're around in your system for hours and hours and hours means that as a person with type 1 diabetes or a person with type 2 taking insulin, you are living in a hyper insulin environment all the time. We are constantly trying to deal with the fact that the insulin we're taking to survive sticks around too long. And yes, sometimes we need it to stick around, right? We need long acting insulin or we need a basal rate in our pump that drips, drips, drips and serves our constant insulin needs. But because this manufactured insulin is so inferior compared to the rapid, remarkable insulin that our pancreas should be making, we need more of it than we ought to if we were producing insulin naturally. And then 
all of that excessive insulin is just constantly hanging around in our system. This means we are hungrier than usual. We have more inflammation than usual. We have more of the stuff that we have to feed with glucose than usual. While I am not a fan of ultra low carb ketogenic diets, there's a really good argument here for the ketogenic diet, which is that it dramatically reduces your need for insulin all day long. And for people with type 1 diabetes who are in this hyper insulin state all the time, an ultra ketogenic diet can help offset that if you are happy living a life with lots of meat and fat and very few vegetables. I'm not happy living that way. But I do see that one benefit linked to reducing the amount of insulin that you have constantly floating around in your system. I will say that intermittent fasting, one of the biggest benefits for me is that I definitely have a larger period of the day where I'm not taking as much insulin because I'm not eating breakfast and my lunch is really delayed. So that means there's this good chunk of the day where I'm not taking big boluses of rapid acting insulin. For me, that's one way that I have seen, without even realizing it, seen that I'm tackling that hyper insulin state. Intermittent fasting is honestly the best and most effective way that I have found for personally managing my weight goals. Before intermittent fasting, I found it very difficult to keep my weight where I wanted it to be. Intermittent fasting, I believe, helps me in a variety of ways, but one of the biggest ways it helps me is that it does cut down the number of hours where I have as much insulin floating around in my bloodstream. Okay, but here's the other thing that all of this means. This is why people with type 1 diabetes and many people with type 2 diabetes need support from GLP-1 medications like Ozempic and Manjaro. Because we are already living in this hyper insulin state and GLP-1 medications reduce your insulin needs, improve your sensitivity to insulin, which, you know, reduces your insulin needs, tells your liver to stop making so much glucose all the time. By the way, metformin also does this. I'm a huge fan of metformin. Simple little pill, it's been around for decades, but man, it helps me so much, especially when I take it before bed. I see the impact on dawn phenomenon and that uh, feet on the floor syndrome. You know, as soon as you wake up, big spike in your blood sugar, metformin calms that down for me. Just a side note, don't underestimate the power of metformin. All right, so if you've been living with diabetes for years and years and years, and you're frustrated with the fact that it's harder to lose weight, harder to maintain your weight, harder to manage your appetite, harder to feel full when you're eating, part of that is hugely tied to the fact that you are living in a hyper insulin environment because you are taking a really inferior form of insulin. And don't get me wrong, I'm so grateful that this insulin exists. I would be dead in 1999 without it. But we have to give ourselves some grace and perhaps extra support from other medications to compensate for the fact that the insulin that we have available today is still not awesome compared to the insulin that our pancreas would be naturally producing for us. You are living on an uphill battle every single day. Take this argument to your healthcare team. Tell them, hey, I need more support because I am using a really inferior form of insulin along with the lack of five other hormones being regulated properly by my pancreas. I need support from things like metformin or a GLP-1 medication. And I want y'all to do your job and help me get approval for those medications. And by the way, I'm just gonna put this out there. I get no benefit by telling you this. If you are having trouble getting a GLP-1 medication approved by your insurance because you have type one, reach out to my friend, Chris Zoki. He has type one, he's a uh, nurse practitioner, and he has been helping people through his virtual clinic get approval 
for GLP-1 medications. DiabetesNP.com. Chris is awesome. People ask me all the time, how did you get your GLP-1 prescription approved by insurance? Chris can help you. Okay, that's my rant. That's my rant about this hyper insulin environment. But the other thing that we can all do to combat this, that I know it's made a huge difference for me, is just making exercise a massive priority every single day. If you're not so sure how to exercise regularly with type 1 diabetes, as a person who takes insulin, this book can help you. It's only 100 pages. You can exercise every single day with diabetes, but you got to learn some science in order for it to go smoothly and safely. You can get this on Amazon. It's only 100 pages. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe to this channel and like this video if you haven't done so already. I appreciate the support.